Yes, it's actually happened. Manor Lords has arrived. And so we're going to be diving into a Let's Play series. Let's see what this game is all about. I am so hyped for this. So here we are, the start, the foundation of our little medieval village. Oh god, it feels so good to finally be in this game. I've been awaiting this moment quite a long time. From what I can remember from the demo, the main thing, the key ingredient to this is food and firewood. Kind of like that little demo tip says there. Because it soon goes down to nothing, and then winter comes, and then everyone starves to death. So, let's um, have a little look at what... Ooh, pretty good. Our grain fertility is actually really very good that's nice so i think my overall plan is going to be let's make sure we can get a field down this season i mean it's march now arguably we should probably have planted the winter wheat last year or something like that but we're just going to try and get it in as quickly as possible um so i've just placed down a logging camp because obviously we're going to need timber the roads in this game are just absolutely beautiful they're like the most organic thing you've ever seen and then we'll curve around to there. So we've got a path to the woodcutters. And then we've got to think about where we're going to put this housing. So ideally, I'd like to get three houses out of the first. Oh, no, just perfect. Three houses and all the better if they can have the backyard extensions. Because then at least they can put things like those vegetable plots. I think you can keep goats or something like that. And it makes the houses a little bit more sustainable. Because they don't use quite so much food, basically, from the farmers. Actually, we have used up basically all our timber just at the start. Thomas the Oxen dragging the timber down to the lumber yard. It's one of my favourite things about this game, that you have to actually manually carry the resources to the work site. Okay, so our logging camp is now set up. So for now, I'm going to actually fill this out. Because it leaves us two unassigned families who could still do building and stuff like that, which is plenty. But we can't actually build anything else until we get some more timber planks. Our villagers are starting to get to work, cutting down, cutting down the forest. Go on, give it some. Get that tree down. So while they're building the rest of the houses and we're waiting for some more timber, I think we should give some thought to farming and field locations. So we could have a field maybe on this corner down here. I do love, the one thing I love about this game is how things so neatly snap to roads. So maybe one option could be to do like, look at that. Now that is a nice shaped field. I like things like that. And it's in a good fertility area. Um, but we do, of course, actually need to build ourselves a farmhouse. So we'll set it to wheat, even though we haven't got a farmhouse to actually do any farming with it yet. But you don't actually essentially have to construct fields. Fields to basically auto place, which is at least handy. So our first house is now finished. So we've got a little, a little wooden bathing tub. So we have technically got room out the back. We could do some of these um, extensions. How much silver do we actually have? We have 50. So we could do something like a chicken coop or a vegetable garden. The only thing you've got to bear in mind is I'm probably going to want to buy some sheep at some point for a livestock pen. And getting this regional wealth is quite hard. So do we want to spend it on a vegetable garden? I might just hang on for now. So I'm going to place the farmhouse literally opposite the field here, I think. Let's get it in like that. And then we can assign a couple of workers here and we can start to get this done. We're being talked to by one of our neighbours. Probably don't want to go to war. Not quite yet. That was probably a, a slightly rude response, I suspect. But anyway, I fear there is a slight risk that I might bang on about this throughout the throughout the whole of this video series. But this game is just the most beautiful medieval city builder. I just love it. I'm into cinematic mode, and I just love how oh, I love the look already. of the buildings. I even love the way they're constructed. I love the little plots, how they have little gardens, little sort of fire pit out of the back. Oh, it's just honestly gorgeous. So currently we have got two houses built, but we essentially have five families with living with us, which is a population of 11 men and women. Um, but we need to get to five houses just to house our existing population. And then on top of that, to get any new people to actually come to the village to want to live here, we then obviously got to build spare housing. So we actually are going to need quite a lot more housing yet to to meet our needs. I love this. I just love the fact that you can have this slightly mismatched shape where you can get a garden in one, a slight granny annex for want of a better word in another, and only just like a tiny little garden in the other. Let's do it. And then essentially, once that's built, that will then give us six housings that will house everyone we've got and give us spare capacity for someone to move in as well. 
Hey, there we go, farmhouse done. So, let's nab a couple of people off the log cutter and let's basically throw them over to the farmhouse. Still gonna give us a couple of spare families to do work, but it means that we now obviously can start to um, plant out this field. So they're gonna have to plow it out, then they can sow it, and then let's see what crop growth we can get before we have to harvest. I don't think we're gonna get any sort of mega bountiful harvest, and we may have to try and sort of force harvest it a bit early because of when we're planting, but I think it's worth a punt because food in this game is a pretty precious resource. Oh, the ploughing, the ploughing is underway. And having to do this by hand must actually probably suck quite a lot. And I might have got a bit carried away by this field size, to be honest. Even with like five or six people ploughing. Seems like they've got quite a long way to go. <laughs> Well, hey, we level increased on our settlement. I guess that's because we have built enough plots and we've unlocked a development point. So essentially in this game, you basically have extra tech, which is, I think, limited to each sort of land plot that you're on. So if you end up settling one of the other areas of the map, then you basically start a different development. So this is why you end up specializing some areas and different things. I was having a bit of a look around at what we've got. Got things like basic armor making, which is kind of interesting. Some of the trade stuff, but possibly um, laying traps, trapping. We have a very large animal deposit. It was hunters to skillfully lay traps in the forest, which gives passive income of meat, which does actually sound really useful. And then you could also get hunters can collect hides from traps, which allows us to make leather as well. So I think that is what we're going to end up going for as our initial development. So essentially, each of these houses is currently just a base level one plot, but. To get this up, we obviously have to provide certain things like the church and water access, different types of food, um, clothing, etc. etc. So quite a lot, to be honest, still to do. We're a long way off from getting these up to level two. But one thing we probably should think about doing is placing a well. Now you actually have to have an underwater area, essentially, to be able to do this. Now, as a geologist, I am slightly horrified by the way this has been done. Not exactly very geologically accurate, but anyway, that, that aside, we need to place a water well somewhere. Um, so, where can we squeeze one in? It's going to be a good place. I mean, it wants to be fairly central, doesn't it? So I guess just somewhere along this main road here is fine. And then people can still get to the hitching post and the supplies, etc. Many days later, and they are still ploughing. <laughs> they have got such a long way to go. Oh, there we go. Our hunting camp has been finished. So I'm going to actually assign someone to this and then hopefully that's going to mean that we can start to um, hunt down this wild animal deposit which should give us a lot more resources. We do also have a berry deposit which probably is going to be worth harvesting. Uh, I suppose we better think about things like granaries and things about how we're going to be ending up basically putting the supplies indoors. It's probably okay in spring but all the bread and stuff we've got sat outside probably isn't exactly what we want probably build a storehouse while we're at it as well. But hey, so we've actually just had another family move in, which is going to give us another essentially unassigned working family, which is perfect. But it also means our housing is actually now basically full again. This is not city skylines. We don't want grids and, and big blocks and squares. So I kind of want some random meandering roads that sort of, I don't know, vaguely curve round. Yeah, we can just, I can just squeeze two little houses in my random and completely irregular plot that I managed to squeeze in here. Um, okay, let's form the militia. I think we just got some weapons delivery. Uh, yes, 20 spears and 20 large shields. So I guess we can form a spear militia. Okay, so we've only got 12 people in the unit, so we're a little, it's not exactly gonna be a large army, but there we go, we actually have an army that we can call on to some point. Well, let's hope we don't get invaded. Oh look, all our people are off collecting their spears. Jacob's got his spear. And a hell of a haircut. Wow, look at that. That's a bowl cut if you've ever seen one, isn't it? So since uh, fuel supplies are actually starting to get quite low, we've got literally two months left, as well as food, admittedly, uh, we need to think about placing down um, a, a one of these, whatever it's called, Woodcutter's Lodge, which basically turns the timber here into firewood and then I think they'll probably set up a market stall for it as well. The rest of our little houses here are starting to get built up on a little random corner pot. Is that a little outdoor toilet? <laughs> I love it. I love it. An early medieval portaloo. 
I think we're just going to be perpetually short of housing and families, basically. Well, not so much housing, just families. So we've still only got six. Really, we pretty badly need another family because I've got so many things I could put them on. We're going to have this um, Woodcutter's Lodge coming, coming, on, coming online shortly where we're going to need them. Really, they've still not managed to finish plowing this field and we could probably do with more people here to work there. I wouldn't mind setting up a berry harvesting workshop to, to, to harvest the berries, so that would be kind of useful to do. So, oh, there's absolutely loads to do. Okay, they're on to seeding. It's happening. Even though they never quite finished plowing that corner. I'm not sure what happened to that, but... So I'm going to get the foragers, foragers hut place down. We have got quite a large supply of berries here. I think it'd be silly to not try and harvest them while they're there. If nothing else, it should sort of alleviate some of the pressures on our food supply because we just don't really seem to be getting that much meat. Oh, we've got one meat now. I'm kind of a little bit disappointed by the... We've got a couple of hides as well, I suppose, but I'm a bit disappointed by the efficiency, should we say, of this hunting camp. It's not been quite as productive as I was, as I was hoping, if I'm honest. But I guess they have got quite a long walk into the forest to get to the animal deposit. Since we actually have 16 timber now, I'm going to strip one of the guys, well, the only guy off the logging camp, so we can at least get some of the things like this forager's hut built, because we can't, without any unassigned families, basically you get no building done. So, once this field is properly sort of sown, then I'll pull one or two of the people off the farmhouse as well. But for now, I think we need to leave them on. And that brings our forager's hut online, and I'm actually going to throw the spare family into that for now. Our firewood supply should at least be improving here now because he has at least... Oh, and he set up a market stall as well. Oh yeah, back to back. <laughs> They're peddling their wares, firewood. selling their fire supplies. Firewood. <laughs> Come buy your firewood. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so there we go, 100%. The field is sown. Oh, we actually even got a little, a little bit, a little dribble of crop growth there. Which is really what we need. I don't think we can actually see anything really poking out the ground yet. But that means we can now strip these two people off this farmhouse because there's basically no more work to do on there now till the harvesting, I don't think. So, we need to think about what we're going to be building next. So by the time it comes to harvesting, we are going to need a windmill and we are ultimately going to need an oven as well. So, we might as well find somewhere for these to go already. And we can squeeze a little, little communal oven down here somewhere as well on the main road. Nice, so we've got a couple of spare families, let's get them built at least. Hey, as we push into May and it starts to rain heavily, we just got another new family. So that gives us a fair bit of spare family. So I'm going to put someone back on the logging camp because ultimately we are going to need more timber. And oh that means we've still got two people spare here to work with, which is actually really nice. So we've got seven families now. Oh, we've actually just lost some of our stocks damaged by weather. That's why I moved the food. I didn't think the weather was going to damage some stone and tools. But I suppose in the meantime, we'll just quickly throw someone on the storehouse and then at the very least still move this stuff inside. I'm not as really gathered as many berries as I thought we were going to do already. I don't know what is waiting. Oh, he's ill. Rest until healed. Well, that's not ideal. Wow, that looks like... I don't think we'll try and say his name. That looks like YouTube demonetization right away, doesn't it? <laughs> Okay, so our windmill is online. I'm not going to bother staffing it with anyone until we actually basically harvest because there's no real need. Although we can actually see our crop is starting to grow. There's wheat. There's actual wheat. Which is nice. And there we go. There goes our tannery. Nice. Um, so I'm going to assign one of the new families that just moved in to work this. We which should work, hopefully see. take the hides which are being produced over in the hunting camp and turn them into leather which we can then sell on at the market should then meet one of the leather needs. So then essentially all we need to do is build a church. But if we look over at the church, essentially for that we need planks. And so to make planks, we need to build a saw pit. So we need to find somewhere we're going to locate this. I mean, logically, it makes sense to put it kind of near all the other, other resources. So we'll try and squeeze it in. Should we try and just squeeze it in the inside of one of these or something? Just throw it in there, something like that. And then that should give us a saw pit, which should at least may enable us to start to make planks. Although, as usual, I could kind of do with another family before we get onto that. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like the yield of one per sort of bushel of wheat as such. Because if I go over to the crop tab, we can see the next harvest in 83 days is supposed to suggest 101 wheat. So I'm not sure which is the kind of truth of these two. 
I guess we'll just have to keep an eye on it um, and either they'll harvest automatically at the end of summer or we can always force them to harvest if we're a bit worried we're going to be starting to lose yield. Hey, there we go. We now have our little clothing stall as well. Our little market's starting to look kind of cool. I like it. I like it. So they should be selling leather on there as well now. We also now have nine months food and five months of fuel, which is much nicer. Starting to feel a little bit more sustainable. I'm going to reassign the man from the logging camp over to the saw pit because we basically have 25 timber so we can turn some of that into logs and then hopefully we can then think about getting our church built. Oh, we're already starting to produce planks already. We'll have this church in no time. And we also need to think, actually, I've just realised about building more houses because we've got eight families now but we've only got eight plots. So, how are we going to squeeze some more people in here? We can squeeze in like a little set of plots down here. I just love the irregular shape of it. That's just my favourite thing. It's so sort of organic looking in the way the slightly irregular and erratic way that they build. I think one of these even had room for a second extension, didn't it? Oh yeah, this had the room for an expanded living space. Let's build a little granny annex on this one. <laughs> so I'm still not entirely sure what this means for the harvest. The, the predicted harvest seems to be plummeting away, but I suppose the actual yield is here coming up. I guess it's just not growing as well as initially predicted. Starting to look like wheat though. You would hope we're going to get some grain and eventually flour out of this. Oh, rain the old famous July rain is back. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, so we're getting the rest of these plots put out. We're actually going quite well on plank production up to 10 now already. And then I think we're going to try and sneak our church in somewhere over here. Just to sort of fill out this end of the village. I'm really liking to start to look how this thing is coming together. Although we are deforesting quite a large area of land over here. So, there we go. We've got our 20 planks. So, let's head over to the church plot. I think we want it to go somewhere like here. On the edge of the village here. So that we can have people that are still quite near to the market. All these houses should hopefully be able to access this wooden church. Honestly, I just want to take a second just to admire how the village has grown so far. Honestly, things are looking pretty good. Hopefully this grain harvest is going to be decent. Between that, the berries and the hunting, that's going to be enough to see us through the winter months until next year. And our little medieval village is... Well, I just think it looks great. I love it. Really pleased. Get ourselves a little stone cutting camp set up because we are going to be needing stone for future construction. You've basically used all our stone there just building that church. So it is going to be a bit of a walk for someone to get there and and then back again, but we should probably think about trying. At least once we get a couple of spare families, someone to start working that. I'll set the church as the higher priority because I want to get this built first because I want to start to upgrade some of these plots. And then we should be able to at least get up to a medium village. We've luckily had another family move in. For now, I'm just going to let that continue to work. Although I say that, we just have we about run out of timber. Okay, we're going to have to stick someone on the logging camp then. I suppose the saw pit is still producing planks and so we're ending up burning through our logging camp and we've got the woodcutters lodge and if we do run out of timber that is actually going to be a problem so <laughs> a new family arrives and we immediately go back down to one again the church is done we have religion we have our little wooden church we can change the church bell sound <laughs> oh, wow that's, that's a bit flat isn't it I love it. I love how you can change the church bell sound. Very cool. Resources stolen by nearby bandits. That's not ideal. I don't think there's... Is there bandits in our area? It doesn't look like it. Can we... Oh, they're on the next... Some brigands on the next sort of region over. Well, that's not ideal, I don't suppose. Um. Hmm... Well, I suppose we have got our militia to call on if we need to. Oh, we're up to 18 now. Feeling very thoroughly well equipped. So, in theory, we should now have enough to start levelling some of these up. We do. So, it actually costs four timber. Quite expensive. So let's get it done. And we need to get at least two of these. Actually, a bit short on timber now. I've not had someone on there long enough. And our stonecutter's camp... Oops. Let's just save logs in. Our stonecutter's camp is now finished at the other end. But we haven't really got anyone to work it at the moment. And the, at least the short-term need for stone isn't super great, but it's nice to at least have it set up. We're almost going to be on harvest time as well too. 19 days left, and then we're going to be trying to get this harvest out. we got, so far, 43% growth, which I don't suppose is too else. bad. Okay, there we go. That's our first level 2 Burgess plot. Like a slightly... Oh, we actually have not a thatched roof, but like a, a shingle roof. 
which looks kind of cool. I like it. I like it. Um, their demands they need taverns, stone church. Oh, and oh, they actually need proper clothes, not just a piece of leather. God. So yeah, we're going to be a way of upgrading them any further. And um, we do need to try and get a second one of these in. We do have enough timber for this, so I mean, what's going to be a good one to do? This one's a double one, so let's get that one built up. Our general opinion has increased massively. I suppose we do have good food variety, a church, and clothing now. <laughs> Things are looking good in the village. Oh, a bandit camp was sighted. Where? Is this in... Oh no, okay. Quite a long way away. Okay, we don't need to worry about that too much. As long as it doesn't spawn or anything to my village, then we should be okay. Okay, so it looks like the berry deposits are now fully empty. So we might as well remove this seasonal worker off there. In one day, this harvest is going to be ready anyway. So let's, for one, start to put them... Oh, you can actually have a ploughing station on this farm. Um, let's start to put them basically on the farm now. Because we're going to have this harvest to do here soon. I'm going to take someone off the saw pit and put them onto the farm as well. We want to make sure we get this crop in probably sooner rather than later, I think. I don't want to end, the, any, like, end up losing yield. Hey, settlement level increased. That'll be because we built out our second Burgess block. So we're now a medium village. Um, and it also means we've got another development point. Oh, I see doubles capacity of berry deposits. Oh, that's how you get sheep grazing on pastures slowly multiply. <laughs> I love it. Um, oh, this is more of a farming, farming one, isn't it? We'll go for sheep breeding, because sheep, I was thinking about going for sheep for one of the next things that we're going to do. Don't know if that was a good decision or not, but we've gone with it. And it looks like the harvest is coming in. Look at that, that is exactly what we want. As usual, we are in never-ending amounts of pouring rain. And we've just got another family, so I'm going to stick them onto the farmhouse as well, briefly for now. Yeah, I know the exposed things are getting soaked, but it's raining. Well, all things considered, I would say that went pretty well. Um, so they're going to transport all this wheat probably over to the granary now, which is a good thing. We'll strip two more farmers off the farmhouse. Let's stick one on the oven and one on the windmill. Let's just basically get this wheat turned into bread. We'll leave one person on the farmhouse just so the rest of this wheat gets cleared off this field. And that is hopefully going to be our winter food supply. I think we're pretty well equipped, to be honest. We've already got like 16 months of food, so I think winter's going to be fine. If anything, probably the bigger concern is the amount of firewood, because I think you use double during winter, because people have to heat their homes as well as cook. But for now, we should be good. Ah, so the last of the wheat is now in the farmhouse. I've just realised they may actually have to just, like, thrash this wheat to actually get it into grain before it can even be milled flour. I forgot how detailed this game was, so we're going to have to leave someone on that farmhouse doing that work, at least for now. Because otherwise we're not going to be able to get any bread out of it. We're getting flour! We're getting flour! We should hopefully then be able to take over. We're getting bread! <laughs> it's happening! My long, last past hour of work to try and get a loaf of bread is actually happening. It's a great success. I'm actually really pleased with that. So, while the rest of the bread is still being produced, I've set the rest of these up into being constructed into some level 2 plots as well. So then we can also look, maybe, because these have got the bigger back gardens, is using these to produce some of the artisans that we need to produce some of the extra clothing that we're going to eventually be wanting. We also, once we've got enough bread done, we need to get someone off up to the stonecutters camp because I think we're going to start to need stone soon. And I also now want to start to think about livestock farming as a more long-term solution to the clothing than just relying entirely on the hunting lodge. So we can build here a little sheep farm, which I think is probably the most logical thing to do just in this corner here. And then we can probably set out some pasture, like so. But then I think it's not only the sheep farm that you have to do, you actually have to bring in sheep. We don't actually currently have any sheep, so we're going to have to trade for sheep. So for that, we're going to need a livestock trading post. Which we can sneak in down there. So that's going to give quite a long list of things to get built by the builders. These church bells are going off. Is someone getting married or something? Ah, and they're actually just starting the ploughing process for the next round of winter wheat. Oh, God. So as soon as this is finished thrashing, which they still haven't done, then we need to get it all milled and spread, and then these people can go on the farm and start ploughing, and hopefully we should get a bit of a better crop next year around. 
See, on these larger level 2 plots, we can do things like little blacksmith shops, um, bakeries, tailors, cobblers. So, you know, we can enable shoes to be crafted essentially from the leather, which is going to be sold on the market. So this is going to be really important, I think. So as we progress through October, the rest of the ploughing is going on. We're still converting all this into bread. The bread stocks are increasing kind of nicely. Our food situation actually, by and large, looks pretty good. And we're getting the rest of our burgess plots upgraded. Just need to wait essentially for that to be done, get a sheep farm, our livestock trading, and then all will be good in the world. I think now might be a good time to go for a little wander around our village. Spawn on the outskirts. Watch my peasants tilling the field. Mill merrily churning its way away. Flower duties. I do like this little first person walk around feature. This really is kind of cool. Gave the old ox a hand for the month old gray. He spat it in my face and tried to carve me a new nipple. <laughs> Everyone's really working around. The ox, old Peter, is off carrying another log. Cheating him? Never. Perhaps he simply does not know how to cook properly. <laughs> Never wander around the market. You'll not find finer wares anywhere else. Oh, they've got berries, bread, and meat. What a, what a variety of food stalls that they've got here. Him? Never. Perhaps he simply does not know how to cook properly. Some leather and some firewood. Lovely. <laughs> berries, berries, bursting with flavour. We still seem to be losing resources to these bandits. She's kind of annoying, but I don't know if we're really ready for a bandit confrontation, to be honest. I don't know how we know if how effective they're going to be, how many of them there are. Oh, there they all are. I mean, just look like a reasonably big band. <laughs> Not sure I necessarily want to take that lot on, if I'm honest. I think maybe we'll think about building our own manor house first and all that sort of thing. Winter is coming. Winter is approaching. The White Walkers are on the way. And then they got this field plowed, though, which is good. Um, yeah, so we're running out of basically time for the end of this year. Has all this grain been done yet? I think the problem is the farmers have stopped doing the grain to plough the field, but it means the mill now has basically no flour to, to run. Which is slightly annoying. I suppose what we'll do, we'll take this guy off the windmill for now. I'm going to stick him on this um, stonecutter's camp, right at the far away. So at least he's got something to do. And then once these have finished doing this field, they'll then thrash the rest of the grain and we can stick someone back in the windmill. They can mill the wind wheat through the winter, I don't suppose that really matters. Oh wow, we've hit a new settlement level already! It's a large village! Nice! That's probably because we've got this third plot upgraded down here. We really are going to have to decide what we want to do with some of these though. Bowers workshop, armourer's workshop. Can we make... Um, oh, that produces helmets. Oh, we could produce war bows. What about just like, basic weapons? <laughs> Oh, Spears is from the blacksmith's workshop. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Well, first, I want to use some of this money to get some sheep, but we still actually haven't yet built the sheep pen yet. So we've got some way to go. But anyway, I think we will probably end this first video here. I think, by and large, this has been a really successful start. I'm really, honestly, very pleased with this little village. But hopefully you've enjoyed it. We will be continuing this series. We should have another video out tomorrow. So stay tuned, do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you all on the next one.